The same rigged media that incited these riots in the first place with their hysterical propaganda about Donald Trump being literally Hitler has not only created the conditions to legitimize those riots, as they did with Ferguson and the whole Black Lives Matter issue, they're now literally rigging, hoaxing media segments to create this narrative that these people have a legitimate grievance and that Hillary Clinton should demand that the election result be overturned. They're actually hoaxing media segments to try and run that scam on live television. We're going to go to that clip in a minute. I just want to tell you about the products at InfoWarsStore.com and InfoWarsLife.com because we've extended the election super specials to help defend liberty. We're now sold out of many of the InfoWars Life formulas like Knockout, but we have extended most of our top-selling super specials at InfoWarsStore.com. There's no question that Hillary and the globalists will not lay down and accept defeat, and a counterattack is imminent. As I just explained, it's already happening with the riots, with the demands for Hillary to ask that the demand that the election result be overturned. We need to keep fighting. This is only the beginning. I told you about this with Brexit, and look what happened. They're trying to overturn Brexit. They may even try to overturn this if we don't stay on the front foot. And of course, you can help us do that by getting the products at InfoWarsLife.com. Help defend liberty and support InfoWars against coming attacks while getting super high quality products. And you can go on the website, read the five-star reviews. We don't have time to fake our own reviews like a lot of websites do. They're authentic, original five-star reviews from people who have got the products and who are really having benefits from them. 30% off super male vitality, 30% off DNA force. 30 to 40% off InfoWars Select, store, storable food. Again, the government's storing food. Why shouldn't you do it? If nothing happens, then you just eat the food and you save a ton of money anyway. It's win-win. 30% off Survival Shield X2. 30% off Pro Pure King water filters. And 15% off all Molon Labe apparel. Those great T-shirts, conversation starters, and again... We're not funded by MoveOn.org. We're not funded to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars by George Soros, yet we're kicking his ass on a daily basis. Why is that? It's thanks to you getting the products. This is not a cliche. When I started working here, there were literally two employees. And that wasn't even that long ago. You know, 10, 11, 12 years ago. Look at what we've achieved after that. And it's solely down to you supporting us, helping us to grow this network by getting the products at InfoWarsStore.com. So please continue to support us as we move forward in this battle, in this war. And the election was only part of the battle. The battle goes on. And it goes on with the rigged media now trying to hoax this narrative that Hillary Clinton has a legitimate grievance that she should be president, that they're going to try and pressure the Electoral College into changing the rules after the game's already finished by just handing her the presidency. Yes, it's extremely unlikely, but if we allow this narrative to gain a foothold, it's only going to grow like a tumor. So this is CNN interviewing a supposedly organic, authentic, anti-Trump, pro-Hillary protester on the streets. Now listen to this guy and specifically listen to the end of the interview when Don Lemon, the host, starts talking and admits that this so-called organic protester is in fact a CNN employee, a cameraman. Let's go to the clip. So you don't feel like this was a fair election because it looks like Donald Trump won fair and square. How did he win fair and square? Hillary had more votes. More human beings voted for Hillary. This isn't fair. We didn't get one vote. You didn't get a vote. It's just like back in the day when your vote was one third. Oh, the Electoral College, you're somebody who wants to blow that up. You want to get rid of Electoral College. Just count the votes. It's ridiculous. Hillary, you're a lawyer. Walk in, go to the Supreme Court. I believe in you, Hillary. I've been to Rwanda. I've been to your hospital in Rwanda. I've seen all the good you've done. Well, you I can... believe in you. Women need you. Minorities need you. I need you. Chicago needs you. We all need you. This country needs you to stand up and walk into the Supreme Court and say one vote equals one vote. What's wrong with that? What's the debate? You definitely feel his passion. There's other people out here who feel the same way. Don't At one play. point, you had people who were blocking his road. Chicago police moved in. Everything has remained peaceful. Like I said, died. As you see, thousands of people still continue to gather. 
but like we've heard this man, very passionate about the idea. He doesn't want Hillary to stop. Yeah, Brian, you know I used to live there, and I know that guy. That's John Gerkovic. He actually went to Africa with me as a cameraman. But anyway, that's another yeah. story. <laughs> All right, thank you, John. Thank you very much, Ryan. There you have it. There you have it. Rigged media trying to create a hoax. And, you know, he kind of over-egged it, didn't he? I mean, let's be honest. He kind of gave it a bit too much when he was playing that role of this irate anti-Trump agitator. As you heard, Don Lemon. I know that guy. Oh, he's our cameraman. Oh, really? So we looked him up online, and a resume for John Gurkovich, who is the guy named the so-called irate anti-Trump protester, and what we found correlates with Lemon's statements about a cameraman working for CNN and filming in third world for third world nations. So it is him. They got a CNN employee to play the role of an anti-Trump agitator to drop this narrative, this butthurt, whiny, crybaby narrative that they want to change the rules of the game after they've lost the game. Again, they want to pretend, they want to argue that a field goal should have been worth six points after they already got crushed. Well, it isn't worth six points, sorry. You can't just invent new rules after the game's over. Get over it, you lost. But they're going to try and continue this narrative. And Michael Moore is firmly on board. The complete hypocrite who in June 2016 said he was voting for Bernie Sanders because Hillary Clinton was the corrupt Iraq war voting Wall Street corporate establishment candidate who he would never vote for, lo and behold, four months later, oh, Hillary Clinton's great. Everybody should go out and vote for her. Now, filmmaker Michael Moore, this is up on RT, filmmaker Michael Moore has become a political beacon for devastated Hillary Clinton fans to move on and get SHIT done after posting a five-point plan which went viral. And I mean, it got 400,000 Facebook likes, 880,000 shares. He then pointed another one, posted another one, which I put up on my Twitter. And he directly calls for people to follow the orders of moveon.org, which is owned by George Soros. So this is a guy who cut his teeth going after big business, going after the corrupt establishment, supposedly in the name of defending the rights of the middle class. Now he's openly telling people to obey George Soros a billionaire globalist elitist who specializes in overthrowing legitimately elected governments around the world. And look what we have with this narrative. Oh, Hillary won the popular vote, even though the popular vote isn't even being counted yet. She should just change the rules and march right into the Oval Office because that's not what third world dictators do at all, is it? But Michael Moore, the tolerant liberal, the socialist, that's what he's pushing. He's telling people, Follow the orders of George Soros and moveon.org. Get out on the streets with these violent, bigoted, hateful, intolerant goons and start smashing crap up because you didn't get your own way. This is the narrative they're going to move forward with. Here's another one. Gateway Pundit reports, far-left group ANSA Coalition plans massive demonstration unrest during Trump inauguration. Of course, in January... The post-election demonstrations against Trump are being orchestrated by socialists and Marxists. That's why they're so violent. ANSA Coalition, a socialist group, is planning mass protests in Washington, D.C. during Donald Trump's inauguration. The group claims to be an anti-war group, but has remained silent during the Obama years as he drone-bombed country after country across the Muslim world. When are Democrats doing that? Those bombs are peaceful. You can massacre Muslims across the world. As long as it's a humanitarian war, then it's perfectly okay. When George W. Bush does it, then it's horrible war crime. Obama does it. Hillary Clinton does it. Literally destroys governments, creates an international migrant crisis, creates ISIS, arms them. They haven't got a damn thing to say about it. And it's a coalition. Give me a break. The far left group announced the protest on Wednesday. Progressive people, yeah, progressive people who want to cancel democratic elections. That's really progressive, isn't it? Progressive people from all over the country will be descending on Washington, D.C. on January 20th to stage a massive demonstration along Pennsylvania Avenue on Inauguration Day. So you've got ANSA pushing it. You've got George Soros's MoveOn.org pushing it. You've got CNN pushing it for these fake rigged hoax interviews with their own cameramen. 
You've got Michael Moore pushing it. This is the narrative going forward. And they'll continue to get more violent. If we don't get out ahead of this narrative right now and discredit it, like we did to a large extent with the Black Lives Matter, which was again the same thing. George Soros funded from the top astroturf fake movement, not authentic, not grassroots. Again, it's all part of this weatherman Bill Ayers method. They want to overturn the entire system. Their solution, their utopia, is going to look worse than anything you could ever imagine. These people hate capitalism. They hate the middle class. They're complete losers in their own personal lives. They've got nothing to live for, nothing to strive for. Self-entitled, whiny, butthurt losers who don't want a job, don't want to get ahead in life. And they're control freaks at heart. They're authoritarians. That's why they lust after controlling your life. I mean, who, who has even got the time to interfere with everybody's life? to the extent that they do, with their safe spaces and their trigger warnings, and they're being permanently offended at everything. These people at heart are control freaks, and they won't give up the reins of power very easily. So that's why we need to stay on the front foot with this. These riots are only going to continue unless we get ahead of this narrative. And again, you've seen Revcom, Revolutionary Communist Party, organizing these riots the black bloc anarchists, the 25-year-old unemployed virgins living in their mom's basement, decrying the system while doing nothing about it, smoking weed all day. I mean, they, don't, they barely even engage in hashtag activism anymore. They're that lazy. And it's like, as Stefan Molyneux said, you know, FDR won the election because of radio. JFK won the election, the presidency, because of television. Donald Trump won the presidency because of social media. In fact, you even had the Daily Beast yesterday saying that myself, Alex Jones, Mike Cernovich, Chuck Johnson, Molyneux, we were all to a great deal responsible in terms of social media for helping Trump win the presidency because we actually work hard, we care, we strive to win. We don't lay around being butthurt, whiny, self-entitled losers who are too lazy to do it in the moment, and then when they fail, they go out and smash crap up. That's not how it works. That's not how you get ahead in life, okay? Again, assassination threats, flooding Twitter. Ron Paul has come out. This is up on Infowars.com. This is what I said a couple of days ago as well. Ron Paul, Trump needs to resist neocons and shadow government elites. He said, unfortunately, there's been several neoconservatives that are getting closer to Trump, and if he gets his advice from them, then I do not think that this is a good sign. And again, this is going to be one of the problems with Trump. Now, there have been a lot of good noises about him filling his cabinet and the other positions with people outside of the establishment system. And obviously, that's as you would expect, given that he's run his entire campaign on that. You know, getting people like, Kellyanne Conway in there and others, people who've helped him out throughout the campaign. But I mean, there are so many positions to fill. What is it, 4,500 positions for starters alone? Now, obviously, he's going to get some people in there who might not have his best interests at heart. So that's what we've got to look out for. That's what we've got to call him out on. Because even though the media said, oh, Trump's just a demagogue, well, we're not, we're not going to act like those people in North Korea fake crying when Kim Jong-il died, okay? If Trump makes mistakes or he doesn't do what he said he's going to do, we're going to hold his feet to the fire, and that goes for who he appoints in his cabinet. And in this interview, Ron Paul went on to say, we look at the president, we look at what he said, we look at what he might do when you look at his advisors. But quite frankly, there's an outside source which we refer to as the deep state or the shadow government. There's a lot of influence by people which are actually more powerful than our government itself, our president. He went on to touch on foreign policy, and he said basically, quote, during the campaign, he did talk a little bit about backing off and being less confrontational with Russia. And I like that. Yeah, that's pretty good that we're not going to have World War III, right, like we would have done with Hillary. He criticized some of the wars in the Middle East at the same time. He believes we should accelerate the war against ISIS and terrorism without showing he has an understanding of what causes terrorism. Well, the problem with that is, while claiming that they were at war with ISIS, 
Hillary Clinton's State Department was literally hiring guards for Benghazi who were Al-Qaeda members right before ISIS came to prominence. They then armed ISIS and then refused to bomb them. I mean, you saw them dropping the leaflets claiming that it was environmental concerns were the reason why they were giving ISIS members warnings to get out of the area before they bombed the oil tankers. So Obama hasn't even been bombing ISIS. I mean, the Russians came in and basically wiped them out back last year. But again, this is interesting. This is what Ron Paul said today. Quote, sometimes the false flags and the unintended consequences are beyond the control of even a sincere president that would prefer that not to happen. So Ron Paul's raising the potential of false flags that could get us, get America at least, into another haphazard foreign military adventure. So we got to watch out for that. We got to watch out for who Donald Trump hires for his cabinet. We got this story out of Louder with Crowder. Tolerance. Grubhub CEO tells Trump supporting employees they're hateful racists. And this was the CEO, Matt Maloney, of this company called Grubhub, who said, if you do not agree with this statement, which was basically a SJW screed about everyone's a racist if you don't agree with me, if you don't agree with this statement, then please reply to this email with your resignation because you have no place here. More liberal tolerance. So anybody basically who voted for Donald Trump, anyone who agrees with anything that Donald Trump stands for, he basically told them to resign from his company because he's a tolerant liberal and he can tolerate diversity of opinion. Oh, no, he actually can't. He just told everyone to resign. Who disagrees with him? And what was the response? Well, there was a complete backlash, calls to boycott Grubhub, which everybody should do, boycott Grubhub, and what happened? Their stock tanked down 4 to 5% because, lo and behold, intolerant, hateful bigots aren't that popular anymore. And you can hide behind your misogyny claims and your racist claims and your fake, phony tolerance. It doesn't work anymore. People see right through you. Boycott, Grubhub, another company that's going down. We will be back with the final segment of The Alex Jones Show live, Infowars.com. Don't go away. I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese style net censorship was coming to the web because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the Internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to Infowars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. Infowars Live available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You going to sit down and play games and be a trendy or are you going to be part of history? Don't sit by and let the Internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action. 